Hey, Crypto Growth Fam, how's it going? This is your host, Shahzeb, signing in. We're back with another video, guys. In this video, we will be discussing Flare Network. The Flare Factor, it's going to be an interesting one, guys, so make sure to watch till the end. And folks, for those of you who are new to the channel, we primarily discuss utility coins and potential gems. If you're interested in any of that stuff, then subscribe to the channel and hit the notification icon for regular videos. And you can also support the channel by becoming a Patreon. So do check that out as well only if you're interested and folks keep your assets safe and for that you guys can check out the crypto growth exclusive discount offer on decent decent is convenient safe and secure you can check out their biometric wallet which has got a phenomenal 50 dollars off and you can also check out their biometric wallet 2x package guys which has got an astonishing 129 dollars off only if you follow the link in the description box below by the way, folks, Decent supports 3,000 plus of your favorite coins and tokens, and it supports 50 plus blockchain mainnets. I personally prefer storing the assets in a cold hardware wallet, so do check out Decent and, and be safe. Anyways, guys, now let us uh, look into a, a post over here, the Flare Factor. Guys, this is from Scepter, and uh, they've got a cryptic message over here. We've got something awesome in the works. Can't wait to share more details with you so let's see what it is all about i really like this tight uh, this uh, title so this is why this is the title of this video anyways guys flare is also uh basically completing some milestones look at this f assets milestones achieved since the demo app went live 76 days ago let's aim even higher after the xrp testnet reset tomorrow the blockchain for data 32k participants 107k total mints 39 million f test xrp 168k total redeems 27 million test xrp most alt uh, networks would dream of 32k active participants for one protocol talking of hugo fillion guys i found a video over here this is really interesting you have to check this out yourselves and uh, watch the whole thing this is emerging technologies and blockchain with hugo fillion from fumo uh, guys, let's see this. It is an interesting interview. Uh, it was posted one month ago, so I missed it out. Let it check this out. But you have to see the whole thing to see the uh, to get the entire spirit of this uh, video. Anyways, guys, let's see what Hugo has to say. I pinpointed a special point zone from which Hugo talks some uh, really interesting facts. Let's see. Well, let us mean Blair. It, it's, it's, I think, uh, having been to Shoreditch a couple of times, I think it's fairly easy to be bored there. But um, no, we weren't. Um, we... <laughs> it's full of bankers now. Yeah, yeah. Know. It is now. It is now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, no, we, we we set about really after after UCL, uh, we got together and we uh, set about looking at, okay, we want to be in crypto. What do we want to do? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we really focused on okay where, where can we add value and there's a couple of networks out there like bitcoin and xrp that doesn't that don't have smart contracts and aren't going to have smart contracts anytime soon yeah. and we thought well okay well how about we build a you know a really genuinely secure layer for these entities to have smart contracts and in building that yeah. we ended up building something much larger um so in order to basically interact with uh other smart contract networks you need some form of protocol in order to understand what's happening on those smart contract networks and that protocol is a you know a, a data protocol and flare has two formal data protocols so the first is called the flare time series oracle um, which is a mechanism by which flare achieves uh, a consensus over pricing pricing of assets um, could be assets in crypto could be assets outside of crypto and then its second protocol is called the Flare Data Connector, which allows Flare to um, essentially come to consensus over uh, data from Web3. So uh, the state of another blockchain, what has happened on another blockchain, essentially, uh, you know, has Ronit sent Hugo uh, uh, one Bitcoin? Uh, in, in one ones a bit much these days. Um, but uh, then also allows to do the same thing over Web2 APIs. So, you know, if I have some form of like quasi-deterministic data in Web2 that I'd like to, be able to get onto a blockchain, um, it does that. And so Flare uh, at its basis is a EVM layer one blockchain. So it runs the Ethereum virtual machine. So it runs smart contracts. And then it has enshrined into its, uh, into the chain itself, these two data protocols. 
protocols. And the core aspect about these data protocols is that they are operated by the validators, uh, the validators of the network, and they're operated collectively by the validators. So we need to have um, you know, substantial participation of the validators in order to come to consensus uh, over the, these data types. So, you know, we if, unless we have 50%, more than 50% of the stake uh, agreeing that a particular thing happened, then it is not agreed that that happened on the network. Uh, and because the validators are staked, they have money at risk. Uh, this gives this these data protocols a high degree of security, because obviously if Bitcoin. The first currency, really, that you know is is not uh, forced on you at the point of a, a gun or a or a or a, or a tax demand. Um, you know, uh, it's it's a very interesting experiment, and I think it's gone beyond an experiment at this point in global coordination. Um, it, it it very much chimes with you know if you're uh, interested in macroeconomics, like it's kind of macroeconomics. To the nth degree you know it's it's a very interesting free market quasi free market because there are a limited number of people that make asic chips but it's a very interesting market in terms of you know participation coordination um how bitcoin gets updated uh adoption um you know the, uh, a, a greed value of a asset that has intrinsically zero value um you know across a large number of people of course there's a speculative uh, effect but it's still you you can't deny that bitcoin is in many ways totally revolutionary in terms of you know ultimately being the apotheosis of you know globalization as as a as a tool so it's from a fundamental like almost philosophical perspective it's a very interesting thing um the probably the next most interesting is something like you know, stable coins um you know how, how do i lower the cost of using dollars or Pr pr primarily dollars, but there are euro stable coins and yen stable coins and things like that. How do I lower the cost? Um, you know that that there, you know, with the exclusion maybe of Dogecoin, which is I think fundamentally just a internet meme and an expression of the internet's you know, at the, the coalescing of inter the internet and Bitcoin, you know, there's been an explosion, certainly in the last, every time there's a bull market, there's an explosion of meme coins. Um, and, you know, there's a speculative aspect, which is if I get into this meme coin first and it becomes popular, I'll make a thousand X. The existence of crypto and blockchain as fundamentally a casino is, is one of the bad things um, of it. Uh, because it chews so many people up because there's huge information asymmetry in the market. Um, and, and that's, that's kind of sad. Uh, I think the bigger piece is uh, something that rankles with us, uh, which is the funding or fairly limited funding, uh, or, around crypto. And the, the the cycle of capital, which is a very short blessing to you, um, the cycle of capital within crypto, which is a, a quite often very short term based. And so that means products don't get built out, or they get built out cynically, meaning they'll make design um, design choices that really don't give you safety, don't give you robustness, um, don't really end up with something that is, I, I would say, arguably you know, extremely valuable, uh, both from a financial or utility perspective. Um, and so the lack of the, the, the desire amongst the capital providers in the space to basically make the quickest return combined with the kind of speculative aspect has meant that crypto has very much suffered from not having, uh, you know, necessarily as disciplined teams and as, you know, um, I guess teams that are prepared to grind it out for as long as possible to get get what you know what what they want, build yeah. what they want to build. It's definitely a lot of I guess speed dating type behavior. Um, um, what's next? What's next for Hugo? 
Uh, I'm or Flare or I'm uh, so I'm I'm CEO of Flare Labs and I'm chairman of the board of the Flare Foundation. Yeah. Um, Flare's shipping the, the, all of its products this year, basically. Um, if, if if we stick to timelines, hopefully, uh, and you know that um, that's a huge endeavor. Uh, as I said, we're a team now almost of 100 people, uh, of which there's a very large ecosystem component. Uh, starting a blockchain for data, which is what Flare fundamentally is, is uh, a hard task technically, uh, but it's also a hard task in terms of ecosystem development. You have to get people to use it um, because, Flare, because Flare and the space is very DeFi focused. Uh, you have to uh, bring in liquidity. You have to bring in liquidity partners. There's there's a huge amount of work still to be done, um, you know, to 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 see the Flare ecosystem into the right place. Um, but we're also as a team looking at uh, machine learning and AI uh, and where that uh, where that coincides with blockchain. We have some pretty interesting papers and ideas around it. Um, I think that there's some, um, there's fundamentally a particularly valuable thing to do in AI around uh, essentially coming to consensus between different AI models uh, in order to get a more robust answer, uh, a more robust inference. So guys, what do you guys think about Flare Network, what Hugo talked about the entire market? how speculative nature of this industry is destroying uh, the spirit of crypto. Do you agree with him uh, on what he's saying about uh, the market, about the future of Flare, that he plans to integrate AI, machine learning, and a lot of stuff? Uh, I would really like your opinions. Do hit the comment box below and let the community know. Anyways, guys, this was it for the video. If you liked it, make sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification icon if you're interested in utility coins and potential gems. And guys, you can also support the channel by becoming a Patreon. So do check that out. Like I always say in the end, until next time, stay blessed and stay tuned. Thank you very much, everyone.